How many of you have heard of the word clotho? Yeah, it was new to me. So I looked it up, and uh, it refers to a character out of Greek mythology that spins the thread of human life. But it turns out that it's also the name of a protein, and that human clotho is said to improve cognition, kidney disease, and diseases of aging. It's a new thing. It's a hot new thing. And uh, our next speaker, Dr. Carmela Abraham, has done a significant amount of research into this mysterious and potentially very important protein called clotho. Dr. Abraham. Hello. Thank you very much for inviting me here. I'm really excited to be here. It's the first time at uh, Idea City. So, would you like to live 10 to 20 additional health years? Would you? It would be realistic soon if we could prevent the decline or increase the level of the clotoprotein in our bodies. So the question is, can we slow down biologic aging? And the answer is, yes, we can. As you can see here, we have our biological age and our chronological age. Many of us are normal agers, or some of us are accelerator agers. But there are some of us that are super agers, like centenarians or super centenarians. Some have some more resilience so they can fight or be protected against the insults that we face every day. So I would like to introduce Clotho, which is a regulator of aging. It was discovered by mistake, like many other discoveries, by Dr. Makoto Kuro'o in Japan in 1997. So how did he discover the gene? He tried to make a mouse that does not express a certain heart protein, and instead he obtained a, a mouse that was very small and had many changes that we see in human aging, such as osteoporosis, arteriosclerosis, cognitive decline, neurodegeneration. The mouse also lived only two months instead of two years, and as I said, um, had a very uh, short lifespan. He immediately produced a mouse, we can do this by genetic engineering, which overexpressed clotho, which means had more clotho, and only by 50%. That mouse had an increased lifespan by 30%. So instead of 20, instead of two years, that mouse lived three years. So that's a long, big increase in lifespan. That mouse was also very healthy and was resistant to oxidative stress compared to normal mice. So, we just heard a moment ago that Clotho is named after Clotho. This is how the Greek pronounce it. One of Zeus' true do daughters, the goddess who spins the thread of life. So, Clotho has two sisters. Clotho spins the thread of life, Lachesis measures it, and Aptropos cuts it, which indicates death, according to Greek mythology. The field of anti-aging therapies is emerging. The vision is longer and healthier lives using new technologies to control and reprogram the genes and stem cells that are involved in aging. Momentum is building in academia, biotech, and venture capital. Clotho is among the life extension gene getting attention recently because it determines how long we live, how healthy and how smart we will be. And who doesn't want to live longer, to be healthier, and be smarter? So, but as a neuroscientist today, I will focus primarily on cognition and Alzheimer's disease. So why uh, study brain aging? Because in my case of the study of Alzheimer's disease, which I started in 1980, 39 years ago, Aging is the highest risk factor for cognitive decline, Alzheimer's disease, and also other neurodegenerative diseases. 
and other diseases, as I will mention later. In 1990, I joined Boston University School of Medicine and studied why healthy macaque monkeys have age-related cognitive decline. It is well known that 50% of all mammals, including humans, mice and rats, have cognitive decline as they age, while the other half age successfully. So in order to identify potential pathways of age-related cognitive decline, we compare gene expression of all 30,000 genes in young and old monkey brains. And then when we discover that the clotogene expression was significantly lower in the aged brain. Of course, I never heard this word, just like most of you here. So we immediately started to read about it, which was very exciting. The results in our cases, when we measured the clot in the monkey brain, showed clearly the decrease in the amount of the protein as a function of age. A 30-year-old monkey is like a 90-year-old person. We were also the first to hypothesize that preventing clot decline or increasing its level may be neuroprotective and prevent cognitive decline. After years of studying of cloto in the brain, we found that in the Petri dish, cloto is neuroprotective, which means it protects neurons from death, such, such like a shield around the neuron. It is antioxidative and anti-inflammatory to brain cells. And the reason is important is because during aging, our cells are more exposed to inflammation and to oxidative stress. We then tried to see the role of cloto in vivo, in mice. And if we overexpress or we increase the levels of cloto in mice that have specifically genetically engineered to have either Alzheimer's disease or multiple sclerosis or ALS, we can see that cloto improves the outcomes in these mice. We also know that Alzheimer's patients have reduced cloto in their cerebral spinal fluid when compared to healthy controls of same age. Interestingly, it was discovered that one in five people have more cloto due to a small change in their DNA. But this very small change in the cloto sequence, these people can think faster, have an IQ higher by six points, they have a bigger cortex, which is the area of the brain important for learning and memory, and they live longer. Thus, it is obvious to all of us that preventing cloto decline would be beneficial. As you can see in the blue left part of the slide, cloto is decreasing with age. At the same time, neuroinflammation, neurodegeneration, oxidative stress, reduced synaptic activity, all of these changes and pathologies that occur with aging in the brain are increasing. So what we want to do is to increase the levels of cloto at the same time in the hope to decrease all these pathologies that are the result of normal aging. So a little bit of um, lecture about Alzheimer's disease, just one slide. What you can see here is the neuropathological signature of Alzheimer's disease. What we see when we look in the microscope on a slice, of course, post-mortem of an Alzheimer's disease patient. We see amyloid plaques in brown that are outside in between cells, and we can see in black the neurofibrillary tangles that are made of a protein called tau, and they occur inside nerve cells, and eventually they are going to kill the cells. In Alzheimer's disease, one of the neuropathologies is uh, neuronal cell loss, which also we call neurodegeneration. In Alzheimer's disease, the amyloid deposition comes first. And recently, with the help of neuroimaging, it was shown in many people that the amyloid deposition and aggregation occurs 20 to 30 years before the onset of the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, which is memory loss, for example. 
You can see in the upper right, Alzheimer's disease onset. This is occurring 30 years after the beginning of the uh, deposition of amyloid. 10 years or so late, later or before uh, beginning of the disease, there is beginning of production of tangles. The tangles are made of a protein called tau, which also aggregates in the tangles and cause neurodegeneration. And it is probably this protein, tau, and its aggregation that really kills the neurons. The problem is that many uh, neurologists, which started many clinical trials and will discuss it, they start treatment or, or the clinical trial once there are symptoms, but this is already too late because already the brain is full of plaques and tangles, and there, are, there is a lot of neuronal cell death, which is irreversible. So, until more, very recently, around 100 clinical trials were done trying to attack what you see in the yellow box, the tau and the beta amyloid, which are the deposits that accumulate in the brain. And this was done by immunotherapy, by either active or passive immunization of, with amyloid itself to induce the body to get rid of amyloid. And indeed, it happened. The brain was devoid of amyloid after these immunizations. However, there was not improvement in cognitive uh, performance of these patients. The conclusion that we have now it's probably not the right patients were involved in the clinical trials because not everybody underwent neuroimaging. Maybe it was started too late when there is no way to um, go back because the neurons are gone. The other ways um, we can think about uh, clinical trials is to attack the other pathologies that are um, existent in Alzheimer's disease, like inflammation, we, it would be good to induce neuroprotection, to protect neurons from insults that occur in disease, to improve synaptic activity, mitochondria, which is important for the energy of the cell, and also vascular pathology, which occurs in Alzheimer's disease. So we suggest that maintaining, boosting, or supplementing CLOTO will be a treatment for the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. What we want to do is to build resilience and to prevent the symptoms even in the presence of plaques and tangles. And this is exactly what we saw in our Alzheimer's disease mice that were completely wall-to-wall -wall filled with, filled with uh, plaques, but when they had more cloto, they had completely normal behavior and memory and learning. So how about of other diseases that shorten lifespan? We just heard before me two sad and happy end stories. Clotho has been shown in mice to be a tumor suppressor, which means giving clotho to mice killed tumors, including pancreatic tumors. In all human tumors, clotho levels are extremely low or completely lacking so they don't have this weapon to fight the tumor. Clotho has been shown in mice as having strong synergy with chemotherapy, which means that there is need for much less clotho, if the clo much less chemotherapy given if clotho is high, so we can prevent a lot of side effects. Also, clotho has been shown in mice to per potential treatment in acute and chronic kidney disease, which right now there is no treatment for them. So how can we boost or supplement clotho? We can boost the production of the endogenous clotho protein, which means to target the clotho DNA or RNA in clotho-producing cells. In our body, the majority of clotho is produced in the kidney and in the brain. Then it circulates around the body like a hormone, so it is important to increase the endogenous one, the one that we already have. And there are several approaches to do this. 
but the ideal approach will be, of course, a daily low-cost pill, like we take aspirin or a statin, for example. We also can do clotal supplementation. It's possible to do it by a frequent injection of clotoprotein, which can be manufactured as a drug, or a one-time gene therapy injection that delivers a brand new copy of the clotogene and uses our own cells to, ma to um, manufacture clotoprotein. The considerations for such supplementations or treatments are drug cost, route of and frequency of administration, risk of side effects, development timeline, and costs. So the good news is clotal research is accelerating. There have been over 2,000 papers published on clotal in the last 22 years since its discovery. The research points to benefits of maintaining clotoprotein at the young age levels, or, or somehow higher, as we see in the people that have this polymorphism or small genetic change, that they have a little more protein, they are smarter, healthier, and live longer lives. So researchers are working on several approaches to boost production of endogenous cloto as well as supplementing cloto. What's next in the world of cloto? We expect that pharma and biotech industry to follow the academic research community and increase investment in cloto-based programs. So imagine taking a pill a day or other cloto-boosting treatment starting at age 45 or 50 and living a disease-free, longer life by 10 to 20 years. Thank you. You'd have many customers for this pill. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Um, I hope so. But you're depending on other, other companies to take up this research. Exactly. There's no chance that you yourself or your institution. We have a very small startup company, and we, we need the help of the big, bigger pharma or biotech industry, correct? I see. But you have started a company. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I didn't mention, uh, actually, the, the last slide had the logo of our small company called Clogene Therapeutics. And where? Where is it located? In Boston. In Boston. Well, we'll be watching for your IPO sometime soon. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> From your mouth, mouth to God. To God's <laughs> yes. Here, this way. Yeah.